when we were organizing everything for Holy Week this year, I asked Deacon Patrick if he would like to take a turn at preaching on Holy Thursday. And he reminded me, well, you know, Holy Thursday is the day that we celebrate the institution of the priesthood. And I said, well, yeah, that's okay, but I don't need to always speak about the priesthood. And I thought he could speak to it just as well as I could, which he did. And now today's first reading tells us about the institution of the diaconate. So it's my turn to talk about deacons. I'm not going to talk about deacons all, all morning with this, because I promised him there's only so many things you can say about deacons. This, this first reading today from Acts is it's a great story, and it also communicates to us a great truth. The church, the Christian community, is always guided by the Holy Spirit. That's something we can't ever forget. We are always guided by the Holy Spirit. Jesus did not give us, before his ascension, a complete description of how to be the church. And even the New Testament does not spell out every single detail for how we are the church. I know Christians who have become Catholic once they start reading church history, because when they get into that next generation of teachers and pastors and writers, they begin to go beyond just what's in Scripture, and they begin to see how the church begins to take on, we might call it, its Catholic shape. Just one example, if you look in the writings of St. Justin the Martyr, who died around the year 150, just 60 years after the New Testament, we find there already a pretty thorough outline of the Mass. And he describes it as already, this is our tradition, this is how we always do it. The languages have changed, some of the ceremonies have changed, the rituals, the buildings have certainly changed, but the basic format from all the way back then is still the same. We gather together, we listen to scripture, we listen to teaching, we have prayers, we bring the bread and wine, we offer thanksgiving, and we have communion. Already in those early days, the Mass as we know it was already there. But what we sometimes also forget is that these developments are often brought about in times of great difficulty and crisis. When the Temple of Jerusalem and the city of Jerusalem were destroyed by the Romans, both Christians and Jews had to rethink everything about their faith. How will we worship God now if there is no temple? How will we understand the scripture? How will we live as God's people without our holy city, without our community the way it was? We can see a little bit of that in today's reading from the first letter of St. Peter. In a sense, he responds to that by saying, no temple, no sacrifices, no problem. We have Jesus. Jesus is the new temple, not the physical temple, but a spiritual temple. The sacrifice that we offer is his body and blood. And truly, every Christian now is called to be part of the holy priesthood. And the sacrifice that we offer God, most pleasing to God, is the gift of ourselves. The Holy Spirit, the Apostle Paul teaches us, comes to our aid and our weakness. The gifts and the charisms that we need to live as God's people are always there for us, and especially, it seems to me, in times of great difficulty, when things are very challenging for us. Today, to speak again about this first reading from Acts, the, the choosing of those seven spirit-filled men to take on new ministry in the church was another example of this kind of development. In, in one sense, it was a very practical need. There were people who needed food, and these men were chosen to minister to them. But it was also a bold step as one group of Christians began to open itself to another group of believers who were very different from them in language and culture and way of life. And so the ancient church, already in those first days, was learning to be more Catholic in the sense of more universal, more open-minded. And these servants, as we will read later in Acts, these, what we today would call the deacons, they weren't just table waiters, they weren't just the bus boys. They became leaders and evangelists of the church in their own right. 
Today, we face many crises and challenges of our own, both inside and outside the church. The 20th and now the 21st century brings many new challenges to the people of God, unimaginable changes as well as opportunities. Right now, we're just trying to get through a pandemic, but we ask ourselves, how can we be church in the midst of lockdowns and shortages and all the economic anxiety of our time? How can we be church if we can't even go to church? But even if there were no more threat of disease, and even if life would go back to what we think of as normal, the way things were before, there would still be a world of challenges to our faith. We would still have to do what the people of ancient times did. We have to listen to the scriptures. We have to reflect on our traditions. We have to be open to the Holy Spirit. We have to be aware of the signs of the times, the world in which we live, and how God is calling us to respond with his word and with his spirit. And above all, to do this, we need a deep faith in God and in Jesus, as the gospel tells us. Jesus, who is our way, our truth, and our life. And it's not just beliefs about God. It's not just about learning answers from a book. It's not just about things we believe in but it's a secure, firm trust in God that God is with us, that God is leading us to the power of the Spirit. Sometimes old answers don't fit new questions, but faith and trust allows us to discover new understandings and new responses to the challenges of our times. The Gospel today, Jesus says to us, do not be afraid. He does not say our problems will all go away. He does not say it will be easy. But instead, he tells us he is with us. He will lead us and guide us and strengthen us, giving to each, each of us and all of us together a renewal of the energy and the power of God's Holy Spirit. Not only is there a place in God's house for each and every one of us, not only have we been called and chosen to be part of God's people, but we will do and we will be what we can barely even imagine today. We will be the holy chosen people. God, and we will respond in the way that the Spirit calls us, so that we can be the body of Christ, the true temple of the Lord in our own time.